Well, here you have the triple thread hydromatic doing its thing. There's gold in different places moving at different rates in different ways. And you'd like to know exactly what's going on in some kind of detail. But how the hell do you do it when it's all jumbled and messed and dynamic like this? Well, it's actually not too difficult. You do what I call the Paleolithic freeze frame. You simply, when you stop the device, you let it sit for a while and let all of the material beds solidify. Then you can dig through them and see what's going on. Here's what it looks like in freeze frame. As you can see, there's layering going on. Now, my hypothesis on that is simple. You have a fluidized layer on top of a semi-fluidized, almost packed layer. And so the, the interface between those two are those dark lines. That's where the heavies will settle. They'll settle easily through the fluidized bed. Then they'll get into the top of that semi-fluidized bed, stick between the pore spaces, and then kind of work themselves down a little bit. The other side is the same. Not quite as clean because you see that it's coarser on this side too than the material on that side. Again, this is that asymmetrical bump. Bang, bang, bang to a certain extent. Not sure why. I mean, the, the shaft it isn't built that way or whatever, but something about it does that. And here you don't see any layering because of the tray on top, I presume. It keeps it all pretty stirred up. But let's see what you get in terms of gold content. Now here we have the pans from all three of those zones. And as you can see, or more properly not see here, there's really not much in the way of gold here. It's clearly visible. There's, there's some there. Okay, there's your gold. It's reasonably chunky. There is some chunky stuff getting through. But it's not as, as good as the original ore. This, on the other hand, is getting a little, little higher grade. Not much. Here's where the gold is. <laughs> now, you can clearly see that this device does not have a symmetrical distribution of gold. It's not homogeneous. So that's where the gold goes. And I'm pretty sure that's because, again, that bumping action, it tends to come out of that tray. Now, in the tailings bucket, I panned the last two buckets, the top layer on each one, and quite frankly, you wouldn't have been able to see it in the pan anyhow. The second to the last bucket had no detectable gold. The last bucket had two, two specks in the three to four thousandths range. And that was it. So, even though there's quite a lot of gold concentration here, very little is escaping out of that outfalls because it's working its way into the semi-fluidized bed and not getting over there. I mean, that's only six to eight inches, but it's not getting there. And so theoretically, we could keep running this until such time as there's so much gold in here and it's worked its way so full that it's getting out of that. Now, you don't have to wait that long, but this would indicate that this device can run quite a while between cleanouts without losing much in the way of gold. Now let's see how the uh, gold distribution is in this tray. This is from this side and it has a fair amount of gold. That's roughly equivalent to the original head grade. And this is about the same. Now this is a dramatic improvement over the previous technique of just letting this thing sit the entire time. 
by recirculating that material back up in there I do seem to be reducing the gold loading in this tray which is a good thing so based on that information here is the new procedure before startup we uh, dig out some of that material right there that's you know by definition non fluidized to start with throw it in here and that way you can't have an unfluidized bed to the outflow to start with and it'll, it'll form one and if you don't stop it should keep it this will just kind of settle in and and uh, grab some of that gold out and then at the end of the run I'm gonna get another one of these uh, stainless steel trays from the restaurant supply and just swap it out and put it in here and take that one and run it through the bucket. So that'll be the new startup procedure. And the new running procedure is that after putting in a new ore bucket, take one scoop from there. Um, the tailings are also showing a substantially reduced amount of gold. So the second run, gosh, the recovery's got to be uh, the upper 90 percent in terms of what actually wound up in the tailings compared to the free gold in the head grade. Now sit around and wait for that to run down again. Happy prospecting, keep it safe out there.